Hi, good afternoon. Welcome here. We are uh, talking sports with Val. We're actually going to talk some boys basketball sectionals as the draw took place on Sunday. And we decided to split this one off so we can give it a little bit more time here and cover all of our area sectionals. we got two of our teams or two of our schools that we cover that are hosting sectionals this year in Valley and Caston. Valley with obviously a 3A, Caston hosting the 1A sectional down there. Uh, let's start off with the uh, Tippecanoe Valley sectional, the 3A sectional. Number 18 going to be held at Tippecanoe Valley this year. And I would say, uh, you know, Valley kind of the favorite anyway, but boy, they got a really nice draw as well. Valley's got the best record. They're at home and they got a bye. Yeah. So that's a nice th combination to have. And they beat Knox by 22 points when they played them earlier this year. Uh, Knox as a team, again, What's interesting is that Coach Miller from Bremen is the only coach in this sectional who has not won a sectional title. Really? Coach Eskridge at Knox, of course, won two sectionals with the OD. Coach Luce has won six sectionals in his career at three three different schools. Trying to, If he wins at, at Valley, it'll be four different schools. Hmm. Uh, and, of course, uh, Coach Hanna has won, uh, won a state championship at OD back in the day and won a, finally won a sectional at John Glenn last year. And, of course, Coach Galloway has won sectionals at Culver Academy and at Carmel earlier in his career. So, yeah, again, it's a very outstanding coaches in this sectional. Uh, but, again, Valley uh, getting that, getting the bye. Uh, they're, they're all, again, beat Knox earlier this year. Uh, Knox has got, you know, the freshman Schwant. They've got the sophomore McLaughlin, but they're pretty young. Uh, and, again, it's a Valley team that should have a bit of a size advantage in that game. And, uh, again, is it, this it's a Valley team that's kind of played a little slower uh, again, uh, this is maybe not quite as fast-paced a team as the team that, what, that they had last year, but it's a team that really can grind down teams defensively. Intriguing Tuesday game there with Culver and Glenn. Yeah, the, who, between Bream and Culver Academy and John, and John Glenn, one of those three is going to be in the sectional final, and I'm not sure who it's going to be. Bremen just beat John Glenn by 13 last weekend. This Bremen team's coming on, and they got a bye. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions made a run here yeah. uh, and wound up playing on Saturday night. They've got a freshman in Chase Devine, who's a really nice player. Um, Graverson, who's their star wide receiver in football, he's a pretty solid basketball player as well. Uh, it's a Bremen team. They, they're, they're a little live by the three, die by the three. I guess you could say that about a lot of teams, but I wouldn't be surprised if Bremen emerged, at all, if Bremen emerged out of those three and made it to a final. Uh, again, Culver Academy, they're kind of the mystery team. Uh, again, they play a lot of homeschool teams and play a lot of outside the area, uh, but under 500 on the year, and I know they graduated a lot from last year. Yeah. Again, John Glenn, you know they got Shrap Louie and Miller, uh, but struggling a little bit of late. Yeah. it would be an interesting one over at Valley. And, right. uh, and the winner of sectional 18 plays the winner of sectional 19 in the regional. Uh, that could be South Bend St. Joe or Mishawaka Marion. Ooh. And I know Coach Berger <laughs> of Mishawaka Marion got his – I want to say he got his 300th career win the other day, or was it four, 400 career wins, I think, actually. Yeah, wow. I mean, he's in the, but South Bend, Mishawaka Marion and South Bend St. Joe, they could meet in the Friday night game. Ooh, that would be a barn burner. Yeah. Uh, two two pretty dominant teams up in the uh, South Bend, Mishawaka yeah. area. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move to uh, Lewis Cass hosting the uh, 2A sectional number uh, 36. And uh should be an interesting game right out of the gate. Wabash and Rochester drew each other. And these two teams obviously have had uh, a lot of history being conference teams, but haven't really met a whole lot in the uh, tournament. This will be the first ever postseason matchup between first Wabash ever. and Rochester, which yeah. is amazing because Rochester's been playing in the state tournament since 1911 yeah. and Wabash since 1919. I mean, yeah, both teams have never pretty long basketball. Met in right. The tournament. And they never met in the tournament. They never were in the sectional. Before, of course, back in the single class days, Wabash right. probably went up to Huntington and yeah. and Rochester went up to Warsaw. But yeah, this is the first time they've ever met. According to the computer rankings, Wabash and Rochester are the two best teams in the sectional. Wabash has five wins over teams with winning records. Ro Rochester with just that one win over Whitco. Um, but when they played earlier this year, Wa Wabash beat Rochester by five, so it was a close game. Wabash was leading by 21 in the third quarter. Rochester got it down to three late in the game, and Rochester didn't press or trap that much. Mm -hmm. Against a Wabash team that allows about, what, 45 points a game, Rochester put 67 on the board against Wabash. So, yeah. again, uh, I'm, I'm, it's a curious matchup. You still have to say the Apaches are favored, uh, but uh, how Rochester goes about, 
but attacking Wabash will be interesting from a defensive standpoint. Yeah. It, you know, interesting, and of course, Coach Malco, he's done this before where, you know, you have a team that you, you think you might be facing in the in the sectional, kind of play them a little vanilla in the regular right. season. Don't give them a whole lot to, to scout you on. Right. Yeah. It's also worth noting Bryce Bogger of Rochester will be out for the entire True. sectional. Yeah. He is, he's in concussion protocol. He did play that first game against Wabash. So, yeah. again, Rochester not quite as deep as they usually are. They're still deeper than most teams, and they're probably still deeper than Wabash. Yeah. The the one I was ta- kind of considering talking about was back when they played uh, Lewis Cass at uh, Delphi. Yeah. You know, they they had lost in the regular season, but they, they were able to come back and get them in the sectional. So, right. Uh, you know, we've seen Rochester do that before. It's, it's, but, like you said, it's it's going to be a challenge. You know, will uh, Kaiser be able to step up and, you know, fill that gap? Right. You know, he's going to he's gonna be called on in that in a big way. Uh, game number two on Tuesday, North Miami host or North Miami and Winnemac. Um, the winner takes on Lewis Cass, who got that first round by. Really interesting battle of wings in that game when you talk about Jake Riley of North Miami and John Malco of Winnemac. Two kids who are pretty similar type of players, both really athletic kids, both kids who can score off the dribble. I'd give I'd say John's a little bit better shooter. Jake maybe a little bit a little bit more of a slasher. Yeah. But two really good players. Just watching those two go at it will be interesting to watch. Again, it's a North Miami team. I saw them play the other night. They're playing a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. than they were earlier in the year, and they're playing more man defense than I've ever seen a Ryan Demean coach team play. Yeah. So we'll see how Winnemag runs their man offense against North Miami. I, I would say you give Malco the um, the nod a little bit as far as team around him. He's yeah. got a little better team around him maybe than, right. than Riley does. Right. Again, um, it's North Miami. You know, again, Lake Musall is another guy that Winnemag's going to have to have a defensive game plan against. Yeah. And he can get to the rim too, right? Lakes, yeah. he, he's he's really you can't speed him up, mm-hmm. and he's he gets he's and when he decides to get to the rim, yeah, he's tough to stop. Yeah. So Pioneer has the first round by. They will take on the winner of Wabash and Rochester in Game One of Friday. And of course, Lewis Cass will take on the winner of North Miami Winnemac there on Friday. So. Uh, some intriguing matchups there looking uh, ahead to Friday. Right. Again, Pioneer, they play a zone, and that will be interesting if they wind up playing either Wabash or Rochester because both Wabash and Rochester can shoot it from deep. So will either of the whoever they play, will that team try and shoot it basically over the top of Pioneer? Um, and, again, how will Pioneer try and get their buckets against, uh, you know, if Rochester plays them, they'll try and press probably and try and, force the ball out of Drew McKegg's hands. If it's Wabash, Wabash is just physical and strong. Mm-hmm. And how will they match up? Uh, yeah, so. Wabash is going to be a pretty determined team. They're going to be hard out because, obviously, the seniors have really worked hard to get to this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, Lewis Cass, they're, if there's a sleeper team, it would probably be them. They're at home and they got a bye. Mm-hmm. You look at their record, they're 8-12, and 12, but they probably play, if they haven't played the toughest schedule in the, in the sectional, it's close. They just played, you know, their last two games of the regular season against Twin Lakes and Lafayette Central Catholic. That'll get them ready to go. Yeah. L.J. Hillis is really an impressive player mm-hmm. because he just does a little bit of everything for that team. He can post up and score, but really, when the game gets tight, they put he's almost their point guard. Yeah, winner of uh, thirty six plays. The winner of thirty five. That is the sectional that Westview is hosting. Westview is sixteen and five. Westview has beaten everybody in their sectional by double digits. You would have to think, and they won the sectional last year. So you'd have to think the Warriors, a traditional powerhouse program, you'd have mm-hmm. to think Westview would be the favorite. Yeah, Coach Pribble doing a nice job there at Westview. Yeah, to, uh, replacing Rob Yoder. That was a that's a tough yeah. that's a tough ask because Rob Yoder did a great great job there, but he's oh, doing yeah. a, Chandler Pribble's doing a really good job himself. Yeah. All right, let's move to uh, 1A sectional number 50, hosted as, uh, well, pretty much always, the Triton Trojans hosting this one. And a seven-teamer, so just one first-round buy for the Oregon Davis Bobcats. Tuesday, first game, Trinity and Marquette. The winner will play Oregon Davis. And then on Wednesday, Triton and Culver Community. We talked about that. Argus takes on Westville in Game 2 there on Wednesday. Marquette Catholic already has a win over Trinity Greenlawn. They already have a win over Oregon Davis. In fact, both were pretty decisive wins. 
So you would have to think Marquette Catholic will make it to Saturday night. It's a younger Marquette Catholic team. It's not quite the team they've had in previous years. But, again, their schedule has made them Mm battle-hardened. But, again, it's not – they're not they're 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 definitely good, but this is not a the quite the program that they've had maybe uh you know eight nine years ago when they were in seemingly re- regional semi state state every year right. uh they're but they're they're very good coach Tarnow does a very good job um they will be i'm certainly they will be very athletic uh so you have to like their chance in the top half the bottom half of the bracket certainly Triton again they're ranked number eight they're the only ranked team in this sectional and they're at home you certainly have the to, to like their chances of you know coming out with a trophy at the end of this week, they beat Culver, but again they beat Culver by only five when they played earlier in the year. Jacob Pitney missed the Culver game with a sprained ankle. We don't know if he'll be healthy for this game. They need they would having his ball handling would certainly help in this game mm-hmm. if they had him back. Um, again, otherwise Tr- Triton's fairly young at in kind of that ball handling spot. Landon Patrick is just a sophomore. He's moved it. He starts if Pitney can go. Patrick's done a, he did a really nice job when we saw them earlier this year, but again, just a sophomore and kind of inexperienced. But again, Gage Riffle is a really good shooter for Triton. Um, and then, you know, Swanson and Workman give them that toughness. Mm-hmm. So, it's, again, it's a Triton team that does it with on the defensive end. And Culver, they've got Jack Rogers, who's so strong, averaging 20 plus points a game. He had 16 against Triton uh, when they played earlier this year. And then the key for Culver will be David Height. Can he be healthy out? Uh, he did play against Triton when they played earlier in the regular s- season just this past Wednesday, but he was hurt. He had a hip injury, trying to play at less than 100%. We'll see if he can get back and be healthier for this Triton game. Argus Westville, you know, we talked about Argus and talking sports. The the big thing is, obviously, is Sean Richard going to be healthy? Yeah, he, he's been sick all week, so uh, we'll see if he's healthy for this Westville game. This will be the fourth ever sectional meeting between Argus and Westville, and Argus is 0 3 against Westville. Hmm. Though the most they haven't played since 2012 in a sectional game, uh, they played as recently as 2021 in a regular season game. Okay, uh, watch out for Caden Pepper of Westville, very good player. This Westville team's pretty athletic. Went 10 and 12 in that tough Porter County Conference. So, yeah. uh, Coach Sanadi, a new coach, but they have the two actually they're two Pepper brothers who are solid they were a young team last year athletic but young i'm curious to see what they look like this year especially with a new coach yeah should be an interesting one obviously marquette and triton probably your favorites to reach that saturday game but you got to play the games right so all right let's take another or let's go down to uh sectional 52 1a sectional held at caston and south newton Tri-County will get the uh, first game there. Frontier had to buy. They will play that winner. And then in game two on Tuesday, West Central and North White. And the Comets got the buy, so they will play the winner of the West Central North White game. Looking at the top half of the bra, the bracket, Tri-County has wins over South Newton and Frontier. So you'd have to like their chances, but they only beat Frontier by five when they played earlier in the regular season. So that's a Frontier team that's pesky. They... It's a frontier team with a new coach, and they don't play very fast. So they can kind of grind. They'll they'll adapt to a sectional game pretty well, to a half-court sectional game. I think Frontier will be good at that. And, hey, Frontier beat cast in a cast in earlier in the year, so they, they feel pretty good playing at the launching pad. So, again, you have to like Tri-County's chances to make it Saturday night, but I wouldn't say it's it's just obvious. I, I mean, again, the, the, they can just roll out the balls. Tri-County will have to earn it. Then in the other half of the draw, West Central played, uh, North White beat West Central by one when they played earlier in the year, but Caston has wins over both West Central and North White, beat West Central by 33, beat North White by 23, both of those games within the last month. Both West Central and North White have new coaches. Um, Coach Odom is new at West Central, had a great success with their girls program, but again, just kind of establishing his program on the boys' side. Same thing with Coach Smith with North White. He's a veteran coach overall, but still his first year. Watch out for Dane Hood of North White. He's a very good player. He's really athletic. He can handle it. He's 6'4". He can rebound. He can drive to the basket and score. But, again, you'd have to like Caston's chances of making it to Saturday night. Last time Caston hosted the sectional was 2020, and they won the sectional that year. And they got a bye that year, by the way, in 2020. Yeah. Yeah, you really like like their chances of getting into the uh, Saturday game. But you you got to look at, you know, 
losses against Tri-County and Frontier. So if one of those two teams is there, they're going to have to uh, really be on their game, obviously. Right, they're going to really have to be in the game. Caston is a team that's versatile defensively. They can, they can play man, they can play zone. They can even press a little bit if mm-hmm. they need to. Mm-hmm. And again, Caston, uh, we've talked about uh, Grant Yadon is a senior who's really been coming out of late. He gives them a big man to give them some balance along with Lane Hook in the front court to go along with their guards with uh, – it's, uh, Caleb Stinson, Talon Zider, and even Carter Klinger. Yeah. They're not just one-dimensional three-point shooting team like they kind of maybe were early in the season. They've got a little bit more to go with that. I think Yaden has really, once he kind of got out of the football mode. Yeah. Because uh, he was, you know, he's obviously a big body and he can get to spots, but he was struggling to finish even when yeah. he was getting to spots. But now he's really figured that and out. And another guy who's gotten out of football mode has really improved as a basketball player is Gavin Mollenkoff. Mm-hmm. He does all the dirty work, and he's starting to score a little bit now too. Yeah. And he gives them kind of a sixth man or a seventh man who's done a really nice job for them. And then Corbin Smith is another big man who can score in the post. Yeah, experienced. Yeah. yeah. And Carter, yeah. Carter Klinger can handle the ball. So Yeah. Yeah, and we saw a little bit last night with that game against uh, North Miami. They were putting on some press, so yeah. they they want to work on that a little bit. So uh, it's going to be an interesting sectional. Obviously, uh, Caston hoping for some good home cooking. Right, right. Again, it's uh, yeah, and again the 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 crowd there. We saw during the girls regional when the crowd gets going, it's a tough place to play. Yeah, winner of sectional fifty two plays the sectional fifty one winner. Okay, in the regional, and the winner of sectional fifty plays the sectional. 49 winner, which means you'd have to think Morgan Township's going to be the favorite. Yeah. So, who's 51? Uh, I know Bethany Christian will be in that group. Elkhart, Elkhart Christian's having a nice year. So, that's the one up there. Is uh, I don't know a whole lot about Lakewood Park. Yeah. Lakewood uh, Park, Hamilton in that one? Uh, I believe so, yeah. 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 Kind of north northeast Right. I know Bethany has that Tyson Chupp, who's a big-time scorer. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think he might be the all-time leading scorer in Bethany Christian history. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting week, obviously, and we're looking forward to it. And with uh, with two of our teams hosting, we're going to do all of those games. And yeah. Then, uh, we're going to be down at Lewis Cass. We're just going to go ahead, since we've got three teams down there, we're going to do all uh, five games at Lewis Cass. So you and Randy will cover the Rochester games, and then you and I will cover the, the non-Rochester games for that uh, that tournament. So Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, should be some fun stuff. Yeah, and you know, looking forward to Class 2A, Sectional 37. We'll be keeping kind of a side eye on that, even though we, would, we won't be covering it. We don't have any teams in our coverage area. But, boy, Whitco drew Manchester right off the bat. Hmm. And Whitco beat Manchester by five at Manchester the other night, ruining Manchester's chances at a 9-0 conference record. Yeah. <laughs> so that is going to be a very – and now the rematch is next Wednesday in the first round of the sectional. Yeah, and you're talking about a stacked sectional. Right. Fort Wayne Lures, Fort Wayne Blackhawk, and Adams Central are also in that group. Yeah. <laughs> Blackhawk is the defending state champion, and they, they got the bye. So I guess you like – I guess I'm, I guess I'd pick them just because they got the bye, but Kellen Pickett too. He's 6'8". Yeah. But, yeah, uh, that doesn't – anybody can win that. Yeah. Except for maybe South Adams. All right, well, that's uh, going to do it there. We just wanted to do a little separate show for you on the uh, boys' yeah, sectional. Yeah, and, and the 3A sectional of Mississinawa, that's going to be a great, too. Yeah. Belmont, Maconaqua, Peru, Norwell, yeah. Mississinawa. Yeah. I mean, that is going to be a loaded sectional. And Maconaqua, I mean, Peru, Maconaqua has a legit shot. And yeah, Peru has an outside shot. Right, Peru upset Norwell last yeah. year, yeah. and they drew each other right off the bat. Peru and Norwell, that will be a dandy game right yeah. off the bat. Yeah, that would be interesting. So... You know, it's that time of year, so expect yeah. some snow. Yeah. <laughs> expect some snow next yeah. week, oh, even nor- though it's supposed to be 60. Yeah, Northwestern got the buy in that sectional, too. They're dangerous yeah. as well. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it. Uh, good luck to all of our teams, and uh, we will, like I said, uh, check it out on uh, IHSATV.org. All of the games will be posted there. I mean, you can go to RTC4.com, and it will redirect you, but, uh, you know, the end page that you'll end up on is the ihsatv.org. Thanks a lot, everybody.